people see the reservation as a food desert, which is true in a way. But being a chef and learning about indigenous food, you know, there's food all around us. We just have to reconnect with the landscape and know what food is, instead of calling everything weeds. My name is Brian Yazi. I'm Navajo or Diné from a community called Denehotso, Arizona. Founder and now chef of Intertribal Foodways. So I'm home after five years to do a cooking demo. So the first thing we'll do is pick up my family. Hello. Today we're going to a place called the Hogan Restaurant in Tuba City, Arizona. For me to go there with my family is to experience me coming home you know, and also curious as a chef, just to see if there's something new on the reservation. Set you guys off with something to drink. Instead of going to the chain restaurants, I like to support mom and pop stores. All right, I know what I want. Try the mutton stew. To find out whose uh, family the, the sheep is from, you know. The mutton that I get in Minnesota is foreign. It's from New Zealand. So just having that cultural exchange and knowing the taste difference of hyperlocal, that was home to me. The soup usually comes with fried bread, but I would go with Tom's tortilla. In the 1850s, 1860s, with my tribe, the Navajo, we were put into internment camps or reservations. We were given these foreign ingredients, lard, flour, sugar, and fry bread became comfort food, but it's still oppressive to where it's holding us back. Spam is big with our food culture. It came from rations of government commodity, canned meats like beef and chicken that you would still get to this day on the Navajo reservation. As a chef doing pre-colonial food, I had to look beyond that and see what we originally had. The wild game, the, the forage ingredients, the cultivating of um, corn, bean, and squash, seeing what was here originally before European contact. I bought two bags of blue corn, one bag of blue corn flour, and one bag of white corn flour. I used that to do a food demo for my elders and my relatives, my aunties and my uncles, and some of the local um, community leaders as well. Next, we were stopping at Kiginta Flea Market, seeing what's available, and seeing a couple food vendors where they actually had the, the raw ingredients, as in chilchin, they had sumac, you know, they had some other um, dried plants that you could use as herb, you know, and they also had some medicinal plants, for sure. We're looking at the local entrepreneurs, which are grandmas and their mothers who are out parked on, on the side of the street and doing what they can to provide for their families. I like to support the local businesses, you know, just to keep the money flowing within that economy and helping them to stay afloat with the gentrifications that are coming in. <laughs> the chapter knew I was coming home to do a food demo. Put some of these on here, just a little bit like that. They put the word out, it was a community feast. We had planned to do about five to 10 people, but then the whole community showed up. <laughs> Damn, 50, we need more. It's not fast food. He needs to come out here and do it in front of the crowd. On the logistics side, um, they didn't have any portable burners available. Yeah, just do, do it quick, one more. So we end up cooking in the back. Everybody's anxious to see what he's doing, but <laughs> we're not seeing much. We made a blue corn mush. We sweetened the blue corn mush with the agave, and we added some fresh berries and some seed mix, uh, pepitas or pumpkin seeds, uh, sunflower seeds, and puffed amaranth. The second was a soup. I did a Navajo steamed corn soup, and I added squash, carrots, and white earth wild rice. And we had a side of a choice between bison or elk meat. With any tribal community, especially cooking for the elders, you know, it is nerve wracking, regardless of how much experience you had as a chef. You know, you always have to have that boundary and that respect for your elders. You know, again, that falls back on the historical trauma of colonization of food rations, of what they have grown up on and what they only have access to. This one's bison and that one's elk. <laughs> they were into it, definitely. It has a sweet taste to it. Uh -huh. I wonder if there's um, a recipe. Yeah, does it come with a recipe? A couple of elders were asking for uh, recipes. The lady was telling me that she has all those ingredients at home, but she never knew that you could accumulate all those ingredients and make a soup. 
we're in, uh, on the campus of um, Denahotso Boarding School. And um, since the age of five into my late teen years, so I, I used to live here, you know. So it's lots of memories here. The rock mound behind my house it was the place to go because I felt like I was on top of the world being on that rock. I was able to overlook my house. I was able to overlook the boarding school, being curious and setting goals of, I want to be out there somewhere. I'm going to see the world when I grow up. That has helped me in so many ways, knowing where I come from and knowing who I am and knowing where I'm going.